So, it's been a year since I began this YouTube guitar channel, having published my first video back in April 2023. It began with an introduction to my return to playing and recording guitar, and on to the joy of taking delivery of my very first Fender American Stratocaster and the beautiful tones when played through the Fender Twin Reverb Tone Master combo. A year later, April 2024, the Fender Tone Master, along with other items, is gone. And that Stratocaster is up for sale. And uh, yeah, I've surprised myself in regard to this music gear journey and where it would finally lead me. So without further ado, uh, this video is about number one, to thank all those who have and continue to come along on this journey with me. Thank you. Number two, to take a quick look at uh, some of the equipment that I would unbox and put to the test. Number three, a brief description on the gear I decided upon and which I now use in my recording sessions. And number four, to say what I hope to uh, be doing uh, in the months ahead with this guitar channel. So number one, a big thank you to all who have commented and to those who have contacted me privately and to a good friend who loaned me various pieces of music gear helping me with these reviews. Now I've had the privilege of making new friends and uh, hope to possibly collaborate musically in some way with other musicians and uh, also uh, just to encourage one another in something that, well, after all, we all enjoy doing, playing guitar. And a big thank you uh, for all those who share some of your own private projects with me. That's, that is a, a privilege. I do mean that. Thank you. So number two, briefly, because you can go into my channel playlist to see these topics in detail if, if you'd like to do that. In my first 12 videos, my journey series, I began with my introduction to my music journey, which covered a very brief background history regarding my semi-pro performing days back in the 70s, early 80s, and then returning to playing guitar 40 years later. Now, in June of 2020, I purchased an American Fender Professional Stratocaster, and after a brief encounter with a Fender Champion 100 combo amplifier, I took ownership of a Fender Twin Reverb Tone Master, another digital modelling amplifier. Fender really has done some great work with these Tone Master series uh, products. However, I would later uh, decide to trade mine in only because its replacement covered all the tonal bases uh, I was searching for meaning the Tone Master would never get used. It wasn't that there was anything wrong with it. I've got to say, I do miss the fact that you can lift that with just a finger. I really miss that. Now, at the beginning, I think like many folks, I was overwhelmed with the amount of music product available. And while trying to investigate effects pedals, after much research, I opted for a, a multi-effects digital modelling unit, the Moore GE250. It's a moderate priced unit, and while it has a large collection of simulations and effects, and it does them really well, I would soon begin my search back into the world of physical pedals and a powered pedal board. You might ask why? My return to physically playing music was not just about recording production, but enjoying the physical touch and feel from guitar to pedal, pedal to amplifier. And I find that physical products can have a bearing on the way I personally approach what I play. What about you? Do comment below. So guitars began to fill the rack uh, as I tried to find the sounds I was looking for when the Fender American Professional Telecaster arrived, it very clearly showed itself to be an excellent tool for cutting through a busy recording mix. Lovely guitar, but along with the Fender Pro Strat, now being sold off. Why later? As I searched for a thicker tone, I toyed with Gibson's beautiful semi-acoustic 
ES339. I remember using one on my very first recording session back in the early 1970s. Now that would soon be followed by another guitar that had always got my attention as a young player and that was the Gibson Les Paul Gold Top and those wonderful P90 pickups. I will say that this is not top of my list to use in recording. Time will tell if it does end up getting sold off. I'm just not too sure. Now as a youngster of 14 years old uh, and a Johnny Winter fan, I fell in love with a guitar that was designed by a car designer, a guitar I never thought in a million years I would ever own. And so, of course, a Gibson Firebird would soon grace the studio. I fitted the Firebird and the ES339 with the Duesenberg Les Trem 2 uh, tremolo units. As my ear began to develop and my recording sessions took shape, so began a further search for amplification. And that's when a little Black Star Studio 10 6L6 would come close to doing that. It's got a beautiful valve crunch tone and uh, that's what I was chasing. So I still have the, the Black Star. It's a great little lamp. I use it for practicing and it's cream texture vinyl covering. It looks perfect in our living room and that keeps my wife happy. Now, I tried the Fender Blues Junior in that iconic tweed finish. They just look so well. Who doesn't love the look of that? But for me, it missed the mark for what I was looking for. That too was used in a trade-in. Now, as I sold off equipment, it would be replaced by other products to test. And to my surprise, I would venture into the world of Fender's custom shop guitars. Now, it wasn't long before I was inspecting a 1950s Stratocaster with hand-wound fat 50s and a late 64 Stratocaster with hand-wound fat 60s. Now, probably the most unusual choice for me uh, to look at was a PRS S2 McCarty 594 double cut and an Ibanez S series premium 1070 model in that striking charcoal black burst finishes. Both guitars have limited appeal for me, but very useful for certain tonal choices and effects. And of course, I've got that really good whammy bar uh, on the Ibanez. As I continued my tone quest, an amplifier would soon get my attention, and that being the Valve American made Bad Cat, Black Cat 2 amplifier and an extension cabinet. Now, I have to say this is a superb bass for most of my guitar tone and my only gripe, it weighs a ton. <laughs> now, as I progressed with recording tests, uh, getting to grips with various software packages, there were two guitars that would finally nail the rhythm section for me. And that being a beautiful Taylor 814CE electroacoustic and a custom shop Fender Telecaster 61. These are just excellent instruments and they cut so well within a busy mix. I really do enjoy playing those. So there you have it, a very brief overview of parts of my journey through various amplifiers, guitars, pedals and software. As I say, if you're interested, you can take a look through my channel playlist to view all the videos I've made covering all the kinds of music gear I've unboxed. So number three, a brief description on the gear I use now in my recording sessions. Main amplification, as mentioned, is the Bad Cat, Black Cat, this being mic'd up in the sound booth using either a Sennheiser AMD 412 or a Shure SM57. Now for me, the 412 is a little warmer tonally, and that's considering the guitars that I uh, use, which tend to have a sharper tone to them. For rhythm and little fills, the Taylor 814CE does a really nice job uh, when alongside other instruments, and the Custom Shop 61 Telecaster, which again has such a versatile quality to its tone in a busy mix. Now for lead, generally, the PRS S2 McCarty with its humbuckers. It's such an easy guitar to use in a conservative kind of way. While the, the Custom Shop 
late 64 Stratocaster with those single coil fat 60s. It requires a different approach. You could say it demands that you get to grips with it so that you end up playing the guitar with a different type of feeling. For certain rhythm and lead uh, insertions where I need more distortion or deep tremolo effects, this is where the Ibanez series guitar comes in. Not something I use a lot of, but it's very useful in certain areas. Again, for certain tones, the gold top with its P90s can add a different dynamic. So what about effects pedals? The TC Spark Boost pedal, I find that very good for boosting overdrive crunch with the Telecaster and the Stratocaster. For me, there's a fine line between overdrive crunch with clarity of tone and something that frankly is just distortion. The MXR Dynacomp compressor is helpful when using the Taylor Acoustic and the Telecaster 61, just helping to bring some of those sharp tones into a better space. But again, I, I do use it um, conservatively. The compressor is also useful when used with the TC Spark Boost and the Ibanez Tube Screamer during lead guitar parts. I find pinch harmonics and sustain can be more easily drawn, particularly out of the Stratocaster, um, for example. I mentioned the Ibanez Tube Screamer. It gets used in conjunction with the boost pedal and with the amplifier set for an overdrive tone. Now, I've tried a number of overdrive type pedals you can see that in my unboxing reviews. Now the MXR Carbon Delay, a very useful pedal in both rhythm and lead and special effects, but I am very careful how I use it because during recording, it can be better to approach effects like that by adding them via software in production, uh, for me anyway. The MXR Phaser, again, something I may use for rhythm work, um, mainly on the uh, Taylor acoustic, but again, I would say very subtle use, if any. I have a Dunlop DVP 5X8 volume pedal. Now I find this very useful for not just swell effects, but getting clean intro and outro tones and certain rhythmic or lead parts. Moore G250 has some really nice ethereal effects and I'm, I will use that where required. Again, these are more often than not just used sparingly, but it's, it's nice to have that option available. I use my TC Polytune 3 pedal to make sure instruments are tuned correctly. And of course, it is important to check that guitars are intonated and that the strings are tonally good. So there you have it. My music gear journey uh, is at an end, and I'm sure some of you are thinking, yeah, sure, <laughs> that'll be right. But number four. So what's ahead for the channel? Well, I'm not going to be doing so many videos as I move forward because I will be busy writing and recording compositions. Now, having said that, I do have two other guitar comparison videos to upload. So they'll be coming in the weeks ahead. I will be posting possibly once a month updates um, in regard to what I'm doing and possible videos made in reply to folks uh, contacting me. I've had a local uh, couple of guys who message me uh, about reviews uh, on vintage equipment that they're happy to loan me. So we'll see how that goes. I will monitor the guitar channel daily as new folks are always watching many of the videos and commenting or messaging me. So I'll certainly be active in replying. I've been asked if I let folks hear what I've been recording and in time, well, I hope to be able to do that. So do please comment, do keep in touch. Always good to hear from folks. And once again, thank you to all who have been very encouraging and very helpful. Please do, uh, please do think about subscribing, hit the bell to get notifications, like and share. It does help the channel. Do check out my channel playlist, 
which cover my journey back to playing and recording guitar after that 40-year break. So, whether you're a newcomer, an ongoing player, or like me, an old hand returning to guitar playing, I always take time to engage with folks who take time to comment. So, until next time, the recording journey continues. Take care.